Now, Tobago is on a drive to ensure food security for the island. Recently, Secretary of Food Security, Natural Resources, and in the Environment and Sustainable Development, Mrs. Natisha Charles-Panton, took a delegation to Nevis to discuss food security and a possible partnership with the country. And here to tell us more, of course, is Mrs. Charles-Panton. Mrs. Charles-Panton, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us on now. Good morning and happy independence to you and Tobago. Of course, happy independence to you as well. I see you're still in your red and black, and I appreciate that as well. Still celebrating. Definitely. <laughs> I love no. my country. Of course. <laughs> Now, I know that um, before we get into the trip, of course, with Nevis and, of course, securing the food security for the island, do you think there is, in fact, an issue with food security in Tobago? Oh, definitely. Um, there was no significant investment in agriculture prior to, COVID to the COVID-19 pandemic. So we have a lot of work to do as it relates to food security in Tobago right. in going forward. And in terms of food security, is this in terms of our food import bill is too high? Um, are there certain crops that you're no longer getting that you want to ensure that the, the island still has? Well, about 80% of the fresh agricultural produce, um, it comes from Trinidad. Uh, we don't, uh, well, we're not producing enough in Tobago. And of course, we, as we got into office, we started to address that immediately. So currently... We're looking into um, increasing the production of root tubers, vegetables, um, fruits. So we are um, embarking on several initiatives, um, especially under the Tobago Agribusiness Development Company, to boost pr agricultural production in Tobago. Right. Now tell us some more about the initiatives. I know you would have touched on one, but tell us some more in terms of how we can get back uh, the island of Tobago to that state of food security. Okay, so we came up with um, four de developmental um, pillars, um, production, uh, marketing and research, agro-processing and agro-tourism. And I decided to do agro-tourism because we wanted to start to monetize the natural resources that we have in Tobago. Uh, earlier in the year, we went to Grenada and we looked at the, the Cocoa Festival and Grenada started to monetize a lot of the natural resources there. And I saw it fit that Tobago has so many rich natural resources that we could do the same, right? Um, so while we clean up those cocoa estates, over 140 acres um, of, of estates that we have, we can also embark on, you know, reviving the history and the, and the cultural um, aspects of the cocoa industry while we, we embark on, you know, um, actually producing cocoa and, and marketing our chocolate, right? Um, but across... Across the entire division, um, we are looking at um, the fish industry. Um, Tadco recently revived, revamped the capital of paradise, and we are exporting fish and earning forex. Um, we have looked at, um, you know, tractor pool, providing the services for farmers and trying to increase um, our service delivery. So we are doing a lot of things under the division and, and especially providing planting stock to farmers and showing them how to increase their yield. Of course. And what about going in the schools, uh, Mrs. Charles Panton? Is there any sort, of, um, any sort of plan to go in the schools and maybe get young farmers on board as well with this, uh, with this project? Oh, definitely. Um, we are working with the 4-H group and the Tobago Agribusiness Development Company, um, it, that company, that company under my division, it has partnered with ECA and FAO, and it also allocated about $250,000 towards um, environmentally friendly chemicals so that, you know, we are targeting the school feeding program for all those farmers who want to engage in contract farming. Now, I know um, in the early part of August, you'd have taken a delegation to Nevis. Can you tell us about the trip, you know, the purpose of it, and what were some of the uh, conversations coming out of that, uh, that visit? What attracted us to St. Kitts Nevis um, was the botanical gardens. It's a beautiful um, botanical gardens and the management structure. And um, so we went to see it. And, you know, if you have been to Tobago, you know that our botanical gardens um, it's heavily underutilized and it, it really needs, um, you know, some sort of intervention. 
So when we were, so we decided to do a holistic um, approach, a holistic visit to the, to Nevis, not only to see the botanical gardens, but to also, um, you know, investigate um, agriculture um, because that is the, the you know the majority of the mandate under my division. So when we got there, we met with Minister Alexis Jeffers, and we had several field visits to food farms, to agro-processing plants. We visited greenhouses, and we met a lot of technologically advanced um, uh, greenhouses being run by persons, and it was extraordinary. And what um, Minister Jeffers, Alexis Jeffers, um, realized was that special purpose companies could be something valuable for them because they have a lot of agro-processing, uh, they're into a lot of agro-processing and they're um, falling short in terms of marketing their products. But TADCO, um, the Tobago Agribusiness Development Company, we ha have made a lot of advancements in that area. So we started to discuss um, the value of setting up special purpose companies for <coughs> exporting um, value-added products. So it was a, a very meaningful um, exchange. We also spoke about the fishing industry. They wanted our fish, right, um, the bycatch. So TADCO would now, um, you know, follow up on those discussions as well as how to get some of those local Tobago products in the groceries, uh, major um, supermarket chains in St. Kitts Nevis. So TADCO will follow up on those opportunities. Of course. And of course, were there any specific timelines that were discussed in terms of, let's say, at the end of the year or early 2023, so we can know exactly how soon these things are going to roll out? Oh, definitely. But Nevis is a approaching an election. So mm -hmm. um, at this time, we have to give Minister Jeffers some time to campaign. So we decided early next year, 2023, that we will continue discussion. Of course. And how was this visit to St. Kitts Nevis different, let's say, from the um, the Agri Expo and Forum that we would have had in TNT? I mean, was it was it more beneficial? Were more conversations coming out? I mean, how was it similar or different to what we would have had? Well, I didn't attend the Agri, Agri Expo, actually. Um, my assistant secretary attended, Mr. Assistant Secretary Nigel Tate. Um, so I'm, I'm not too familiar with what um, happened at the expo, I, I would imagine that it would just be um, exposure to the different types of um, products and, and more clients there, right? But the, the trip to St. Kitts Nevis was planned before the Agri Expo and, and the, the invitation was extended very late. So Tobago participated, you know, rushed into the Agri Expo. But we were in Trinidad for the trade show right. and the trade show was a success. We made a lot of, um, you know, advancements in terms of, you know, finding clients, um, you know, making um, plan, planning meetings, you know. So it, it, the trade show was a, a success. And of course, the Tobago boot won the prize for the best boot at the trade show. So that's a good sign. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> and that's a good plug. So congratulations, of course, to Tobago on that as well. Um, so earlier you would have mentioned, of course, you know, um, the cocoa estates and cleaning the cocoa estates and ensuring that we have that product as well to ex export. But what about the breadfruits and other such crops that might be indigenous to the island? Is there a thrust to also promote those as well? Oh, definitely. So breadfruit takes some time to grow. Um, we do have breadfruit trees uh, in Tobago, but not enough to sustain a viable uh, market, right? But we are um, encouraging persons to plant breadfruit, and we uh, will be focusing more on root tubers, actually. So we will be exporting alternative flour come September. Um, that's dashin flour, cassava flour. So the focus would be the root tubers until we get um, enough data and uh, um, but as it relates to the breadfruit in order for us to, you know, export or do anything meaningful with breadfruit. Right. Now, earlier as well, you would have mentioned that you would have visited Grenada. You had this visit, of course, to St. Kitts Nevis. Are there other countries in the region that you will be hoping to visit soon to ensure that we have that food security for the island? We have to go to Guyana. Um, we, we have to start... Um, Focusing more on livestock production, right? Livestock production is at zero in Tobago. Um, so we definitely have to pay a visit to Guyana uh, pretty soon. 
and maybe Barbados to bring in uh, sh sheep, different breeds of sheep. But we are almost done with a policy for livestock production so that we have some direction that we need to go, right? But definitely, we have some things planned in the future, So, but we're targeting specific areas, and livestock production is one of them. Livestock production, okay. And are there certain areas in Tobago where you would say um, they, they need a little bit more attention than others as it relates to agriculture and ensuring that everybody, you know, have, they have enough food, I would say, to sustain themselves? Okay, um, not really. I mean, Tobago, it's Tobago, yes, a tiny island, um, 116 square miles. I think um, the same attention needs to be paid all over Tobago. Um, in terms of um, any particular areas, well, as I said, with the root tubers, um, you know, short-term crops, right, um, uh, livestock production, the fishing industry, it, it's um, proving to be very lucrative. The pilot yeah. um, program under that is, is, is successful. We're bringing in Forex. The capital of paradise is making Tobago proud um, because we're exporting yellowfin tuna to the U.S. So we we are doing good. We are starting to revive a, a lot of areas, even banana production, planting production, right? So we are doing a good job um, so far with our seven-month stint. <laughs> so we <laughs> intend to continue along this path towards improving secure food security on the island. Of course. And Mrs. Charles Panton, finally, anything else you want to add before we close? Well, I would like uh, to be Gwinians to come on board with all the initiatives. I know, you know, a lot of the farmers would have been disenchanted in the past because they would not have had an avenue for their produce. But now you do have an avenue. We are going to export alternative flour. I do not think that Tobago alone can produce sufficient supplies of root tubers for that um, testing plant. And, and that's a good thing, right? So come to TADCO, engage in contract farming, and let's go. All right? There, you you all time farmers. This is your time poultry farmers, right? TADCO is offering chicks and feed for free. Right. Mm -hmm. Once you engage in contract farming. So now is the time to, you know, participate in all the, the projects. And uh, when we call you out to meetings, please attend because we are serious about food security and going forward. Of course. Michelle Spanton, I have one more question as well. We didn't talk about the farming yeah. practices. What are the farming practices like in, in, in Tobago? Are the farmers using the, the modern forms of farming in terms of the, the aquaponics, the hydroponics, and that sort of thing? So we do have farmers doing hydroponics. Um, we could um, do better in terms of becoming more technologically advanced. What we did after, just after the budget, we created, and when I say we, the division, we created a farm technology committee. And this committee was set up to look at, um, you know, technology and see how we could improve the fa farming practices in Tobago. And that's what's different. Because before, we, we didn't have much technology in farming. And, and, you know, we've been trying different methods, you know, in Tobago over the years and without, with little success. But now the, we are going to embark on improving um, the way farmers um, approach their practices and we, MAFAS in Trinidad, they have been coming up and demonstrating to farmers how to increase their yields, right? And this Farm Technology Committee, uh, they have submitted some reports, they have started um, to do some work in Tobago in terms of using the database and, and, and working along with farmers on how to improve their practices. And you'll see some initiatives rolling out soon. Right. So um, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, TTT will invite me again and we'll have a discussion <laughs> as to how these initiatives. <laughs> I know, know for sure the producer is listening and I, I hope that um, I hope that they do invite you in again as well. But you have more updates first. But Mrs. Charles Panson, let okay. me thank you so much, of course, for uh, sharing exactly what the island is doing in terms of food security. And as we mentioned, we will have you back again soon to provide us with some more updates. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. <laughs> 
And that was Ms. Natisha Charles Ponting, the Secretary of Food Security, Natural Resources, the Environment and Sustainable Development, telling us about a recent trip to St. Kitts Nevis and of course how the island can ensure food security for all the citizens.